Hey, this is the dish breakdown where I break down a dish so you never have to rely on a recipe again. And today we're breaking down chili. I'm serious about this stuff. Now when it comes to making chili, you're gonna wanna make sure that you choose the right aromatic. Chili generally starts off with diced onion, minced garlic, and then some sort of pepper. If you're aiming for a spicy chili, use jalapeno. And if you want a chili that's a little more neutral, dice up some bell pepper. And in terms of quantity of each, just don't go overboard. Use just the right amount so that the flavor comes through. And once your aromatics are ready to use, take out the meat. Chilies are generally made with ground meat. If you want something richer, use ground beef. But if you want something a little more lean, opt in for ground chicken or turkey. I like seasoning my meat beforehand and then briefly stirring it. And then in a large pot with some hot oil, I'll drop in small chunks of that lightly seasoned ground meat. By doing this, my ground meat is participating in the Maillard reaction. So in the end, that lovely golden brown sear creates a depth of flavor. And before that ground meat can finish cooking, transfer it to a separate bowl. And then for one of the most crucial steps for making chili, saute those aromatics. Now when it comes to sauteing your aromatics, you'll want to make sure that you cook them to your preferred level of doneness. Because when you add an acidic liquid to onion, the cell walls will stiffen, which will make it harder for that onion to cook. Next, for the flavor of chili, it's generally made with ground chilies and cumin. And if you really want to bring those two flavors to life, briefly cook those spices in some hot oil. By the way, this is called blooming. And then mix them together with those aromatics. To add some sweetness to your chili, you can add some tomato paste as well. Just make sure to cook it briefly and then add back in that ground meat. Once a delicious fawn forms on the bottom of your pan, deglaze it with some tomato. Generally, you'll want to use canned diced tomato. And then depending on your preferred thickness and taste, this is where you'll add some sort of stock or tomato juice. And if you want it thicker, add less liquid. Next, you'll want to make sure that you season in layers. It's crucial to salt at the beginning, salt in the middle, and salt at the end. And then to balance the acidity of tomato, add some sugar. And then finally, before you let your chili simmer, if you want, add some beans. The type of beans generally put in chili include kidney beans and pinto beans. However, it's your chili, so make it however you'd like. To really control my salt level, I like to rinse my beans before I add them in. But once they're added, I let my chili simmer for at least 20 minutes. And once it reaches my desired consistency, I serve it up and then of course top it however you'd like. I personally believe that Fritos and chili belong together until the end of time.